Steve Palazzolo, um, pro football focus fame, started his own podcast. Check the mic. Him and Sam Monson, two good dudes uh, doing it with the 33rd team. Steve, what up, man? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, so, the you know, obviously the conversation here in Washington centers around Jaden Daniels, but the big news yesterday uh, was this trade of Jahan Dotson. Um, a- as you look at this thing, uh, what would you make of the move? Yeah, I mean, I, I know the reports out of camp were that he was, you know, Dotson was not necessarily, uh, you know, getting opportunities or, you know, in favor with the new staff or whatever it might be. I, I, I did think, you know, I still think Dotson's a good player, you know, maybe not where he was drafted in the first round, but, you know, showed flashes early on. I thought he could fit as a, as a slot receiver here. I think, uh, you know, for this season, it puts a little more pressure, obviously, on Deami Brown and Zacchaeus and uh, maybe Luke McCaffrey as a rookie. And it just, it, it puts, it, I think it challenges the depth at, at wide receiver, you know, Terry McLaurin, of course, being the, the true number one and then trying to figure out those pieces around them. So, um, again, I thought Dawson would at least be good enough to, you know, be the contributor, you know, still, still be looking for an upgrade, still be dreaming of a Brandon IU coming in. But I, you know, I was a little surprised by the trade, but again, it just uh, moves everybody up a peg and puts a little bit more pressure on the, that next group of receivers. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I've watched Deami Brown since they drafted him, right? I've watched him in practice. I've watched him in preseason. I've watched him in training camp. I've watched him look good on the practice fields in Ashburn. And then I've also watched that not translate to the field um, when they play real games. Is there, I mean, I kind of look at Nico Collins as how much he exploded once they got CJ Stroud, but Collins was at least somewhat productive, you know, like 450 yards-ish productive. Is there any real track record of a guy that has had really minimal production? Like we're talking 10, 12 catches a season to then bust out to like a 40 catch, 600 yard season. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah like here, you can't right? think here's, of one, right? Here's what I'm intrigued by. I mean, just, I mean, not so much. This is great for the commanders, but um, the, the storyline of when you see a guy that, has a couple years of development and, you know, not, uh, not as a starter, you know, as a backup, and then he gets entrusted and, and can he make that move or, or are, is the coaching staff seeing something in Deami Brown that the previous regime did not, um, or are they going to use his skill set in a certain way? Obviously I think, you know, what he did at UNC and what he's you know, showed in the preseason, his ability to be a, a downfield threat, I think is intriguing, you know, to be a, a vertical threat. I think it's a matter of that consistency though. He's always been, uh, you know, had that big playability. Uh, the way he's been used is, you know, let's let's chuck it deep to Diami, see if we can flip the field with him. You know, if he, if that's going to be his main role, I think he can do it. But again, you can't just rely on that. So it's intriguing from a, hey, let's see if year four of development, uh, you know, after sitting as a backup, can actually, you know, do him some good and, and, and you know, see if he can develop some of that consistency. Yeah, it, it it's going to be really interesting to watch. Um what do you think of Jaden Daniels what, from what the little bit we've seen so far and, and just kind of how you expected him to play based on a fantastic college career? I, I think it's as, as advertised when you, when you heard people talking around the league and when Jaden really made his rise up to number two on a lot of people's draft boards behind the, behind Caleb Williams, a lot of people said the same thing like, Oh, but you know, he's a, he's a great runner and he was outstanding at LSU, but he wants to sit in the pocket make throws, go through reads. He's really balanced and athletic in the pocket. I, I like to separate pocket athleticism from outside of the pocket athleticism. And his pocket athleticism is fantastic. And I think you saw, you've seen a lot of that. He looks very comfortable. He's been accurate throwing the ball outside the numbers for the most part. Um, the, the thing I'm curious about with Daniels and, and, of course, with Cliff Kingsbury, you know, Cliff hasn't attacked the middle of the field historically a ton, but he also had Kyler Murray. And so trying to figure out if that was a Kyler thing, if that's a, an air raid thing, because that's they had the pop pass to the tight end the, uh, last week. But that was pretty much it as far as in between the numbers. It's going to be intriguing to see how this offense evolves. But Daniels, I always look for comfort level from the rookies once they hit the field. He looks very comfortable, looks like he belongs. And I think it's, uh, you know, something to build upon heading into the regular season. What do you think? So one, I mean, I, you know how this world works. Like the, I think social media and fans kind of tend to overreact um, 
It was actually pretty right. interesting. Cliff got asked about this yesterday. You know, how much of his offense has he shown? And he said, not much. Um, Jaden's had 15 passes in the preseason, right? Um, yeah. What do you think? Cliff also explained that he is night and day different than what it was when he first came into the league with Kyler. His offense, his mindset, all of this. What do you think of the marriage between Cliff and Jaden? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm intrigued to see what that looks like from Cliff because it, it is it is easy for us to only know what we see, which is okay. Here's here's what happened in Arizona. Here's what he did, and we'll assume the same thing. But we're all allowed to change and evolve. And um, I think the marriage with Daniels is is a is a good one because there, there was also there was a point in Tyler Murray's time at Arizona when he was not used in the design run game a ton as a, you know, as a runner. And then they kind of flipped that switch. And I forget how it was like 600 or 800 yards that Kyler Murray had one of those years. And it was like, Oh, we can, we can lean into this. Kyler Murray can do this. I mean, Daniels obviously has that. Now he has to still have to work on sliding, still have to work on not, you know, taking those big hits, but I'm intrigued by that piece as well, because even if you're going to be a pocket first quarterback win from the pocket first, that, that added dimension of the design running game to what that does for play action and what that does to just keep the defense in a bind. I'm, I'm interested to see what that looks like and interested to see how a clip evolves. I think people focus too much on, well, Terry McLaurin's only lining up on the left and we don't use motion and we do this and that. And even though I generally like the idea of moving guys around for mismatches and creating motion mismatches and advantages to the offense, there have been offenses that have been good who don't rely upon that. You know, Aaron Rodgers' offense is through the years a lot more static. Peyton Manning's offense is back in the day, very static. It's not uh, – so it, it doesn't always mean more success. So I'm interested to see how that all looks. But I think I think the fit for Kingsbury and Daniels uh, is very good so far, and I think it will continue to be. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. And, dude, um, we're talking with Steve Palazzolo here. Check out the Check the Mic podcast, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Give him a follow at – Steve Palazzolo, P-A-L-A-Z-Z-O-L-O with the underscore at the end. Um, I also think you lose Dotson, who showed real stuff as a rookie. Last year took a step back. I don't know about the rest of this receiver room after Terry, but I think Eckler has looked fantastic. I think Zach Ertz has looked fantastic. And I think Brian Robinson is a heck of a player. How can you maybe build a, a offense that moves the ball well. It, it's been brief, but in three drives with Jaden Daniels at the helm in preseason, they, they had a scoring opportunity every time. They scored a touchdown, a field goal, and missed a field goal in his three drives. Can you build an offense that moves the ball well, maybe as a top 10, top 12 yardage offense that isn't reliant on chunk plays anymore? I mean, the, the Chiefs have done it. That's, it sounds crazy to say the Chiefs I know, have been them the last couple of years. They're, they're not flipping the field. Well, you know, Patrick Mahomes had the second worst passer rating on 20 plus yard throws in the entire NFL last year, like 37th out of 38 quarterbacks. That's crazy. I think it's possible. And it's also trending with that's how defenses are playing, right? Defenses are playing more too high shells, which means they're, they're keeping safety back and they're saying, go ahead, go ahead, put, put together a 10 or 12 play drive. And, you know, be patient, you know, show that you can take the underneath stuff, um, run the ball against the lighter box and pick up four or five and, and be patient and don't force the ball down the field. I think the NFL defenses are trending that way, forcing offenses to live that life. And then when they get, it's kind of like an old school Belichick defense. Belichick, you know, teams would move the ball between the 20s all the time and then he'd crack down in the red zone. And it seems like a lot of NFL defenses, you know, for, you know, oversimplifying, but are, are, are saying the same thing, like, hey, you know, be patient, take the, take the short stuff, and then we'll crack down in the red zone and, you know, force three instead of seven. So uh, I think it is possible. You know, it takes that patience. Um, but I also think with Jaden Daniels being such a good deep ball thrower and, you know, probably the, the best downfield thrower that Terry McLaurin has had and, you know, De'Ami Brown's downfield ability, it'll be interesting to see Washington have that type of offense with, with Ertz and Eckler, you know, working the underneath game and, um, you know, the, the running game that they'll have with Robinson and Eckler, but I think they have a chance to have an explosive offense because of uh, Daniel's ability to throw the ball down the field. Well, dude, I also wonder, I mean, not to go back to De'Ami Brown, but 
Diami's best asset is his verticality, and they haven't really had a quarterback to to test it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, for sure. And I, I think it'd be pretty cool if, it, it, like, maybe that's a reason why this will hit. I, I don't know. Um, we'll see. But I uh, I did want to go kind of around the league with you while I've got you. Um, what kind of team? Just overall with Washington. Do you think they have a chance at like a worst to first kind of Houston scenario here? Yeah. I, I mean, the only issue is the Cowboys and the Eagles being in that division, right? You know, yeah. the, the Texans had the benefit of a uh, Jaguars collapse last year and the Colts, maybe not having Anthony Richardson. I, the Washington does seem like the team. Again, this is dependent on Jaden Daniels being as advertised, you know, to have that very you know, surprise season. And then when you look at from a team building effort, a lot of their moves were, were short-term moves, you know, bringing in Bobby Wagner and, uh, you know, bringing in a whole bunch of veterans to kind of fill those gaps, you know, along the roster on both sides of the ball. It, there, there's, uh, there's this mix of, hey, we want to rebuild. We need to build through the draft. And I love what they did in the draft. I don't think they forced needs in the draft. They drafted a lot of the best players that weren't necessarily needs, like Johnny Newton, Mike Sandra still. I love the way they did that. So they had a long-term vision in the draft and Sam then a short-term a dog, vision with dude. watch it watching uh, him every Sam, day he is a dog yeah he is that like as soon as you draft it i i predicted jim harbaugh was absolutely going to draft him because i'm like he has to be jim harbaugh's favorite player right he has to be uh, but he'll be every fan's favorite player he's every michigan fan's favorite player he just flies around the field one of those you know nickel players that um that just does a lot right and, and brings that energy to the defense so I like the mix that Washington had, right? Long term in the draft, a lot of picks, you know, stuck to their guns as far as their board went. At least it seemed like that. Um, but then the Bobby Wagner's of the world and Jeremy Chins of the world, and some of those, you know, let's uh, let's make sure we're putting out a a good group of starters here as well. So that's what I think. If that mesh is Washington, and then of course Jaden Daniels hits the ground running, all of a sudden I think you're surprising some teams. It'll be tough to, you know, unless the Eagles are in collapse mode again as they were last year. I think it'll be tough to leapfrog the, the Eagles or the Cowboys, but I definitely think Washington can do some damage. 